Pretty Row from Pretty Row Plans. Thank you for tuning in. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you will be notified every time I post a new video. So today, I will be doing a review of my 2020 sinking funds. If you don't know what sinking funds are, sinking funds is a fund that contains money that you put aside or save for things that you initially want or you need. For instance, saving for Christmas, you have 12 months <clears throat> starting in January. So every month you can put money aside <clears throat> so that come January, you don't have to worry about where money's coming from for Christmas. Anything regarding your car, so your car expenses, which you have personal property taxes. For, for a lot of people, it's always a slap in the face. So just having that money set aside for when the time does come, you're safe and you don't have to figure out where you're going to get that money from. So if you are looking to see what sinking funds that I have or even just to calculate how you save for sinking funds each month, just continue watching. So this is my new 2020 budget planner. I bought this planner from Erin Condren. I was able to actually design my cover in, in the back cover as you can see. Um, it says an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Pretty row plans. I will do a walkthrough of how I'm setting my 2020 budget planner up but today it's just going to be for sinking funds. So in the Erin Condren planners, there is a note section in the back um, with just a bunch of lined note paper. So this is where I will be showing you all my 2020 sinking funds. I also labeled where I wanted everything to go. Um, so this right here will be where my 2020 sinking funds will go. It's actually on the second page of the notes section. Um, the first page will be my 2020 financial goals. But I wanted to show you all this video before 2020 got here so that if you want to set up your sinking funds that you'll have an idea of what categories you want to set up and how to actually set sinking funds up going forward. So I'm going to decorate this a little bit. I don't have the normal stickers but I do have some washi tape and some regular stickers that I want to use so I'm just gonna go ahead and write out 2020 sinking funds in here So my categories for my sinking funds this year let's see, are beauty, birthday, Cancun. Spending. Then we have car expenses, car maintenance, Christmas, CPA expenses. Greece, 
I'm not going to grease until 2021, but I would like to start saving for it now because it's going to be one of my bigger trips. And then we have St. Kitts Light. Then we have, I'm just going to put SK for St. Kitts Hotel and Spending. Last but not least, we have Valentine's Day. So these are my sinking fun categories for 2020. I have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12. You can also do sinking funds for shopping if you know that you have doctor's appointments coming up and you have to pay a copay. You can also do sinking funds for your doctor copays. You can put sinking funds on there for big items that you want to buy. Um, one of my big items that I would like to buy is a MacBook with the way that my sinking funds and my debt payoff plan is going I don't foresee that in my 2020 sinking funds so it is not listed here I do want to buy it soon but I think I might have to stick with the MacBook I have for another year it's still in good shape the battery on it just sucks so what I might do is just take it to Mac to see if I can get a new battery put in. So once you have the categories that you want for your sinking funds, you need to one, figure out how much needs to go towards each sinking fund and two, how many months it's going to take you to reach your goal or how many months is this sinking fund supposed to happen. So for instance, before I get started, my beauty sinking fund. This sinking fund is for my wax pads. I contribute $500 to this a year and I usually buy the wax pass in November. So my total amount would be 500 and then my total month would be 11 because I usually buy my wax pass in November when they have their specials. So here are my sinking funds. As you can see, I have beauty, birthday, Cancun, Cancun spending, car expenses, car maintenance, Christmas, car expenses, Greece 2021, St. Kitts, St. Kitts hotel and spending, and Valentine's Day. My columns, I have the actual amount, the number of months, the monthly amount, and notes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down the total amount for each category and then the number of months that either the category is due or when I would like to have the money by and that will give me my monthly amount. So for beauty, I need to say $500 by November. So if being that I'm starting these in January, November would be 11 months for me. So the monthly amount will be 500 divided by 11, which is 45.45. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do 45.50. I always like to round to make, make it a little easier for when I'm doing my budget. And then I'm going to make a note here to say to buy has in November. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Let's see. So as you can see, bypass in November. I wrote it pretty small just in case I have extra notes that I need to put in here. All right, and next we have birthday. For birthdays regarding my sinking funds, it's a little tricky. I don't buy a lot of birthday gifts. Birthday gifts are usually for the kids in my family who are my nieces and nephews and my godchildren. So starting off, I'm only putting in here 150, which will get expensed in March. So, Put 150 here, and being that it's going to be getting expensed in March, 
I'm only going to put it in here for three months. 150 divided by three is $50 a month. But I actually won't be putting anything to this fund until February. So I'll write another little note here that says start on in February. That way when I'm doing my monthly budgets, I'll know what I need to account for and what I don't need to account for. So when I do January budget, birthdays will be getting completely skipped over. I will not be putting anything in my birthday saving fund. For Cancun, so all I have left to pay on my Cancun trip is 405, which is due in March. So that will be three months as well. So 405 divided by three is 135 a month. And then I'm going to put here due March 30th. For Cancun spending, this is just a guesstimate. We have not decided what excursions we're going to do while we're in Cancun and what we're going to what we're going to do, period. Um, they have not sent out the price listing for things yet. So right now, I'm just going to say $500. No, I probably won't spend the entire $500 being that it, it is all inclusive, but just to be on the safe side for when we do decide you know what we're gonna do. I know for sure that I'll have enough money to do whatever it is that we choose to do. So I'm gonna put 500 here. We go to Cancun in May. So that'll be five months for that. Five hundred divided by five is one hundred. My car expenses includes my personal property taxes, registration fees, and inspections. Being that my registration renewal is due in January, I've already saved for that for my 2016 sinking funds and it's actually for two years so that is something that I will not have to save for 2020. So for car expenses, all that I'm looking at this year is my personal property taxes and my inspection. So here it will actually probably only be around 240 and then 240 divided by 12 is $20 a month. So 12 months, $20. We actually pay our property taxes two times a month. So I probably will be getting a bill in June and then we got one in December. For car maintenance, it's just really now my routine oil changes. Um, I was paying for my tire rotation every, I think my boyfriend told me to do it like every change in the season or something like that. But with the new tires that we recently brought a few months ago, I am now able to get free tire rotations as long as I have those tires on my car. So I usually spend around $65 on oil changes about four every four months because I really don't travel anywhere. So that's about $260. So here. I'm going to put 260 and divide that by 12 months, which I will round up to $22. And what I'm actually doing this year is I'm going to keep a running record of when I get my oil changes and my tires rotated and anything else regarding my car. She is coming up on five years next year. 
And you know, a lot of times what they say is, once you pay off your car, that's when things start happening. So I just wanna keep a running list because I know going forward, I'm probably going to actually have to bump this up to not only include my routine oil changes, but anything that might happen in the near future. For Christmas, um, for 2019, I started off with $500 for my Christmas sinking fund. A few months before Christmas, we decided to buy a TV. So I bumped up my sinking fund to $1,000. Now, I know this year we won't need a new TV, but just in case we decide to buy something else on Black Friday, I'm going to keep it at $1,000 so that I'm not dumping a lot of money to my sinking fund the last few months before Christmas. So we're gonna put a thousand here for 12 months. That gives us 83.33, so I'm going to round that off to 83.50. Next I have on the list are my CPA expenses. Um, if you all are following me, you know that I am studying to be licensed as an accountant. I do have my bachelor's degree in accounting. I do not have a master's, but I am trying to get licensed and test run about 210. And I still have two more tests to pay for, but I have three more to take. So starting in 2020, I'm going to start saving to pay for the last two tests that I have to take. I do get reimbursed for this but of course I have to put the money up front before I get reimbursed so that they know that I've passed my test. So for this, I have about $450 to save. I plan to pay this probably in March or April. I'm going to put three months and then three months, 450. We're looking at 150 a month. I don't have any information on Greece as of yet. We are planning to go to Greece for Tyree's 30th birthday. We only have the location. We don't have any amounts for anything. We really don't have any dates. Um, but I do want to start saving, although I won't start saving until the middle of the year. So. I went ahead and listed it on here, but for right now, I will be keeping it blank until I get a range of how much I need to start saving and for how long. Next is my flight to St. Kitts. Um, I split up my flight and then hotel and spending money because we're thinking about buying our flights in March when actuality we're not going to St. Kitts until the end of July. So I went ahead and separated the two. I looked at flights the other day and they range from about $700 to $900. So I went ahead and did the average, which was $800. Um, there's a possibility that I will spend less. If I spend less, then I'll just carry that money over into the St. Kitts Hotel and spending. So then that we're looking to pay for these in March, I'm going to put three months here. And then the monthly amount of that is $267. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I already started putting money towards St. Kitts. So at the end of this month, I'm looking to have at least 900 stash away. It might be a little less than nine, but it is well over eight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put paid here or saved. So that going forward, I know that I don't have to put this money here, but I do want to let myself know that I did save for St. Kitts. And then next we have the hotel and spending, which I am looking to save $1,400. I will be saving for seven months for this, which will give me 1400 divided by seven. Whew, a lovely, $200 a month. Last but not least, we have Valentine's Day, which I am looking to spend 
honestly less than 150 um depending on what i choose to get i'm gonna put here two months because in january i get paid three times and then there's another pay period before valentine's day so in total that's four pay periods so just so that i can do it evenly i'm gonna put two months here which will be $75 a month. And then I'll make a note to only contribute the first paycheck in February. So these are my sinking funds for 2020. I might add some, I may not, depending on how, on how everything goes. Even though this is what I have listed, I probably will not be contributing everything in January. For instance, St. Kitts, hotel and spending. I don't believe that I will be contributing anything in January as well as my CPA expenses. These past few months, I've been contributing, I believe about 400. I have my December budget here. So these past few months, I've been contributing less than $400. So for December, I have $342. And then for November, I had $393. So I honestly want to stay in that range of what I'm contributing each month. So I will go back and look at my numbers and make changes as the months go on. That's why this is in the back. This is just the master plan. As you know, plans change and you have to make alterations. So month by month, this will get altered. For January, I know for sure that beauty, both of Cancun, car expenses, car maintenance, and Christmas will be going in January. So I hope that you all have enjoyed my sinking fund video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, comment, and like this video. Until next time, bye guys.